differences across the way that commercial vendors pay price licenses. It's a huge game to figure out which machine to put which, which license on. We try to procure licenses that can run across the enterprise. But most of the vendors really don't want to sell us licenses like that. Um, so it's a huge effort there. Advanced reservations. So we look at our customer and go, what do you really need? And as soon as you get out of the research space, you get to the engineering space, people need certainty of time. They need to know when their application is going to run because they're on a schedule. So we now provide an opportunity for folks to reserve time in the future. You know you need to run the application next Thursday, you can reserve it today. We started doing that, it worked great for a while, but then we started having people having issues because gee, they wanted to run a commercial application. And that required a license. So we had to build, build a license server that allows us to reserve the licenses in advance as well. Baseline configuration, I said, we've put some tremendous energy over the last few years to try to make our centers very similar. This is a, a method for us to decide on the policy and then implement and then monitor that, the, in fact, each site is compliant with the same policy that's available to all of our customers to see which systems um, are compliant and which aren't. User interface toolkit, we have folks that uh, want to write applications. They want to create some level of you know, interactivity for some of the applications. So we provide a standard set of tools, standard set of APIs that run on all of our systems. So if they write an application that uses those APIs, that will run and we'll give them access to the systems. Trying to save them a little time, we can save less than time. Um, easy Biz, that was supposed to be our reference implementation to show people how you could use the toolkit. Uh, if you want. It was a very simple web kind of interface on how to access the schedulers and submit jobs. So we can do that for that purpose. Consolidated customer assistance with SID centers um, it was getting really expensive to provide customer assistance at six different locations. So we have more. And that provides that tier one and tier level support for all kinds of customer concerns. Disaster recovery. That is important. You don't want to lose it. So we want one disaster recovery facility that supports all the uh, all six centers. That is analysis uh, and visualization really, and it's expensive. And people need to have the right tools to understand the data, both pre-processing and post-processing. So we run two activities: one to support the classified rule, one to support the unclassified rule. It supports across the uh, across the program. Hearing some efficiencies talks here. Efficiency is important. We have to run these things in a cost effective way. So now we're exploring um, an enterprise system monitoring. At this point, so we've got that installed so we can, uh, at one site, really see the status of the machines at all the other sites. So we're beginning to understand what we can control. And the next step, of course, will be control. We can begin to control all the centers, all the machines, uh, from just a very few locations. Enterprise configuration management, again, is to make sure we can maximize our efficiency and uh, we do things so uh, common processes for controlling the, the infrastructure. And of course, people and dealing with actually customers. Um, if you don't know what they really want, um, you're going to get it wrong. So we have all kinds of elaborate programs to visit our customers, um, spend time with them. Uh, in terms of the military side, we have programs for all three military academies and some of the graduate schools. We bring them in to work in our centers um, over the summer. We usually have uh, 20 to 30 different groups that are centers. And that's you know, both beneficial for them to understand the research projects, but it's really beneficial for our staffs to have that one-on-one -on -one contact uh, directly with the customers. So we go to where we are today and some things we're installing. So high performance computing, enhanced user environment. I said we, we were doing some work on our storage infrastructure. Here, if you look at kind of the purple blocks, that's where our centers used to work. You would have supercomputers with attached storage. You would do your work, you'd log into your supercomputer, do your work, and you'd have it for all built in a short period of time to move it off to storage, dump the tape. Okay, that wasn't an issue. We started talking to our customers about the storage problem. They said, well, you know, we need time to work with our data. And then it's the green blocks. We um, have now procured a set of utility servers. The major purpose for those utility servers is to host a center-wide file system. The center-wide file systems are about a terabyte per center. 
of active storage. So people can do their work, working on this utility space, their home space, send work off the supercomputers to be done, bring it back to that workspace and continue to work with it. We believe we'll have enough workspace there for about a month, month and a half worth of local storage before you have to dump the tape. I think that's a big workflow. We've also had a whole bunch of series of um, archival commands for organizing your data. So when you put stuff in the storage from now on, you can put metadata around it, you can create your own databases, um, and you find your own, your own way of uh, measuring that and describing it, um, so that you can build the data store you need for your purposes. Okay. Then we step back after we got this figured out. We went, well, you know, now we're going to have this common utility server can we change, it, change things some more. And that'd be the central place you log in. So you don't ever really log into the supercomputers and want to log into the central server. Could we take our visualization and data analysis services as opposed to making people go to one place, move data to one place and do that work? We just replicate that at each of our data centers, at each of our computing centers, remotely controlled by that one team. So we don't have to move data back and forth. You can do the visualization and the data analysis right there where you need to come get the major computation. Yeah, that's a big, big bonus. We've always supported software development for our sites. But now we're going to be able to maybe we'll have more targeting services. So this is still a work in progress, but it's um, in the midst of deployment now. We should, we should have it more or less operational by some. Uh, I have a list of the things that, that occurred over the, over the FY10 period in terms of getting us ready for this. You know, just turn it on. It took us uh, close to two years to put this in place. I'm trying to look at the details here. The last thing in this space I would want to just say a few words about is what I think is a, a whole other dimension that we are going to begin to address. So another thing the utility service lets us do is, is think about is there a different way of delivering our services. Today most of our customers are very comfortable and uh, very knowledgeable in terms of running things on it, running applications on a supercomputer. They know how to use the schedulers, they know how to use the uh, compilers, they, they, they understand some deep commands. But I also look at the community we serve. In the Department of Defense today, internally there are Something on the order of 100,000 engineers and scientists, I think it's actually 120,000. As a community, we serve less than 5,000 of those people. You know, the real high end science uh, part, of, science engineering part of the community. But there's a much broader space of people out there that could benefit by these tools. But you know, if you look at their actual work behaviors, they're not going to take a risk of doing something they don't understand. And it has to be comfortable. What's comfortable for them? Windows like environment. That doing something on their desktop is comfortable. Going to the extreme lengths of getting to the server computing center, going through the account kind of processes we have, and learning how to use all the system things detracts from their time. They have a schedule to keep, and they don't have weeks or months to learn how to do something different. They need to do something that's familiar. So we believe we can we can deliver a portal service, basically a web interface from our centers to a few key applications, predominantly commercial though. In our software development side, we have a program called Create, which is working on some very specific tools. We tend to deliver those tools and some commercial applications through a portal app uh, that allow them to run in our space. Our target to begin with is MATLAB, or a similar product. MATLAB's kind of expensive. Um, because it's pretty easy to see that many applications in that space with a very minor adjustment to the, to the uh, MATLAB code can run in parallel. And you can see speed ups of 10 to 100 with almost no effort. So I think that's a big enough 